Hi, and welcome back to High Pride Data Talks. Uh, today with us, we are honored to welcome Garino Singh, uh, Global Vice President and Chief Architect uh, of IKEA, Inca Group. Uh, with previous roles at Sunbeck Group, Volvo Cars, Volvo Group, Garima is a distinguished figure in the tech industry. She has uh, been a co-author of multiple ISO standards, and uh, she has earned a recognition such as the Swedish National Visionary Award and High Price 2023 Data Management Practitioner of the Year. Um, so thank you for joining, Garima. This is so exciting. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me. So exciting to have you with us today. Uh, and thank you very much for this uh, insightful, insightful pre-event uh, video interview ahead of, your ahead of your presentation at the ninth Annual Data Innovation Summit. Uh, your session, Transformational Data Strategy for Delivering uh, Ultimate Value, promises to be a highlight, focusing on implementing uh, effective data management strategies. And today we are excited to delve into the critical role of data management, uh, especially as organizations increasingly embrace applied and generative AI. Um, maybe to start with, we should actually start maybe with defining the data-driven, what is data-driven transformation? Um, as you lead data-driven transformation in many big uh, Swedish organizations, or has done and will do, uh, can you sh please share your definition of what uh, a data-driven transformation entails and uh, why has it become so even more crucial today when we are in this era of generative and uh, um, applied AI, so to say? So let's start with the first question that you asked. I mean, what is the data-driven transformation entails uh, and why we need it? The data-driven transformation is like, how can you actually get the ultimate value from the data an organization holds uh, for creating the real value, right? Uh, either that could be an operational efficiency, or that could be when, with the help of data, you can build more digital services. That means you can introduce new revenue streams to the company. So for me, for running any sort of data-driven enterprise transformation, uh, it consists of three things. Uh, the first one is assessment. The assessment of the overall enterprise, the different uh, organizations within enterprise, but also even on the team level, that where are they? On what stage of data transformation are they? Are they in a data denial where they don't collect any data and they don't understand the importance of data? Are they data aware where they do understand the data is important and probably they collect some of them, but they are not necessarily using it? Or are they data literate or are they actually data driven where they have started to use not only just you know understand the importance of data, but they also have started to use the data for making decisions. So assessment is very necessary to see where are we standing as a company, as an organization, as a team. The second is the categorization of the data. So what kind of data are we collecting? And with this kind of set of data, uh, what kind of things are we trying to do? Are we just trying to use this data to drive like intelligence, uh, out of this data and make some predictions uh, to improve our own internal efficiency or get ourselves in competitive edge? Or are we really going to monetize this data in a good way where it's, of course, solving a particular problem at the customer side, but also maybe bringing in new businesses? So categorizing your data and what kind of data will play a very important role is very important because we cannot work with all set of data in an enterprise in one go. The third very important thing is that how do we define the data strategy? Because this is one of the myth or misconception people have. It's like, if I have worked with one kind of data transformation strategy in one company, it would exactly work like that in another company, or it would work exactly like that in one organization or another. And that's not true. So it's very important that we define a tailor-made data strategy, whether it's on enterprise level versus, I would say, even on a team level. We need to even tailor-made it even on the team level in one company to make it a fit. So I think for me, data-driven transformation is really all about these three things. Um, then I would say why this is very important, where you know generation AI, generative AI is really taking like almost it's eating the whole world, is that no matter you know how fancy you, the model you create, if you do not have a good data management, if you do not have a good quality data, you will get, you basically you will input uh, a corrupted data in, and you'll get a corrupted data result out. So AI or generative AI 
can give you an ultimate value only if you have a solid data strategy. Super interesting. Uh, can you walk us through your uh, data experience so far? I'm particularly interested in understanding the current scope of uh, uh, and strategy of your data management setup, uh, especially in terms of federated structure, because that has been a um, focus of many organizations these days. Mm. See, a lot, and this is another myth. People see that data management is all about how you operate with it or how you govern it. But before, but before we go into the operating model, I think it's very important to understand that what is the digit, you know, what is the data transformation framework looks like, and what are the different stages in it. How usually I approach it, uh, being a chief architect, is that I usually start from the origin. Okay, what data do are we collecting, and what are the source system where this data is uh, being collected? Then start working on classifying the data. Then the master data management. Then it goes to you know uh, the data lineage that can you really track all your data objects that from where it originates to the uh, and how it floats through the different value stream uh, of your overall enterprise end to end flow. Then comes how can you access the data that is data accessibility. Then comes the uh, uh, and once we talk about data accessibility, then comes the data architecture. Then comes the data uses like how are you your, how are you going to use this data. Data can be used for analytics. Data, the same data is used for building services. So how do you make this data accessible to both of these kind of consumers? So for me, the enterprise data transformation management is all about taking this full 360 degree view of right from a data capture to storing the data, to accessing the data, to securing the data to the, to the uses of data and uses is like multiple. And a lot of what I have seen like in my experience is a lot of enterprise forget about it. And then they start working on bits and pieces. But I mean, all of this needs to work together. So this is this is all about data management framework. Mm -hmm. When it's operating model, once you have this framework and once you, of course, indulge different parts of organization and different competences to solve this, it's also very crucial that how you operate around it. I mean, I have seen three different kind of operating models with data in different companies. Um, I think uh, long back, 10 years back, we all started with centralized operating model where we had one center of excellence of data analytics. Uh, they provided the guardrails, they collected the data from the whole company and they had the platform and they have run all the analytics use cases, even from multiple business domains. Uh, when the companies got very big and global, of course, that kind of setup is not very scalable. Then from this side of pendulum, people went to the completely right side of a pendulum where everything got decentralized. But then, of course, when things got decentralized, that meant also that very high operating cost. That also meant that we didn't really align on tech stack. We couldn't reuse the core capabilities and so on. And there were a lot of duplication created. So that's why I think I'm a big fan of the third model, which is a federated one where you have one center of excellence, which defines the policies, which defines the framework, which can also provide you a central data mesh kind of platform uh, and define policies and standards. Uh, but then there are data citizens which are located all across the company uh, who are working mainly towards their particular use cases, reusing these core capabilities. And I'm, I'm personally a big fan of the federated operating model. Um, I believe you mentioned a little bit, but in your presentation, you outline uh, uh, the stages and main pillars of data-driven transformation, and I think you touched upon some of them right now. Uh, can uh, why uh, can we shortly go um, through them, uh, and then uh, the most what I'm interested in is is why are these stages so critical? Uh, and should be perceived as individually as possible uh, and interconnected uh, as a whole. See, like I mentioned uh, previously, uh, what I have seen where the, the, the data game goes wrong is when mm -hmm. you start to individually work on these stages, when nobody mm -hmm. certainly have a, a full end-to-end -end view. And what happens, of course, the source teams, for example, where the data is being uh, collected, they don't know how this data is going to use. So they handle the data management in one way. But then mm. when the data has, to, and then of course, um, once they have managed it one way, the consumers often have a problem accessing it. And then also, they also often have a problem with data quality. 
Uh, and then some of the data elements you'll find that, okay, in a source system, when they are being originated, they are there, but then when they flow across the value stream, their state changes as well. So metadata changes, the state of the data attributes changes. So what happens in this journey uh, is that during this 360 degree cycle, if you are not connected between producer and consumers, they're often a problem of the quality issues, which I think is very common in all the big companies uh, across the globe. So to be able to solve these issues, it's very important that specifically from enterprise architecture group in any big company to lay out the big, uh, big picture. That, okay, how many data objects do we have in a company? How are they connected? Where are they, are they are getting originated versus how is the lineage of the data? How are we securing it? How, how are we making sure that it is accessible, uh, both for internal users, but external users and so on? So, I mean, if one team cannot see the full big picture, they don't know what's the impact. So if I change this, what's the impact across the value stream? They would not know. So that's why it's extremely important that we should treat data more as an enterprise level game. Every team, every individual should see the bigger picture, but they should also know what is their role in this bigger picture. What are they providing? How are they contributing? So it has to be like, you know, different roles playing together uh, to make the data transformation uh, very successful. Perfect, thank you. Um... What key learnings can you share, particularly regarding the importance of data responsibility, and the effectiveness of the federated data management strategy and the significance of the data lineage that you mentioned? Mm -hmm. I think the first learning here definitely is that, like I said already, data is everyone's responsibility in a company. So it's not only one organization or one person or one team. This is, this is really an enterprise level game. So don't just rely on your chief data officer organization or enterprise architecture or data architecture organization that they will solve everything. Uh, focus on that. How can me as an individual, me being part of one team or me being part of one community can help out in, in making this successful? So it's everyone's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Second, I would say uh, for running any sort of data transformation, because data is a tough game. That's why many enterprises don't, don't do it correctly. So, and in that journey, it's extremely important that we have a bi-directional connection with the ground and the top management as well. Uh, nowadays, a lot of top management thinks that if we have AI there, everything is solved, but that's not really true. So I think the bi-directional connection with the grassroots all the up to the organization is a key and everybody needs to understand this bigger picture again. And who should lay out this bigger picture? It could be a CD organization, it could be an enterprise architecture organization, or in a combination, uh, doesn't matter. But I think in a company, uh, we, I mean, it's an ultimate responsibility. If you, if you want to run a successful data transformation, the bigger picture end to end has to be there. Thank you for that. We are eagerly anticipating your presentation on Data Innovation Summit. I think it's going to be very, very valuable for all the delegates participating. Um, lastly, um, how do you envision the future of data management and uh, data-driven transformation evolving uh, uh, with all of the widespread implementation of, uh, you know, AI technology, so to say? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing that I see is that, of course, how do we manage the data inside? How do we do master data management and where do we store? Uh, it's already there. And I see that another trend, of course, uh, another future trend that will be there in the next five, eight years as well, which is real time as well as the cloud based master data storage management, which I think is a number one trend because we want more flexibility. Uh, we want more. Uh, uh, flexibility to scale up and down in terms of, you know, uh, collecting uh, or even archiving data. So cloud-based dynamic master data management. Then I would say AI will not only play a role in getting you the new insights out of the data, but I think uh, AI and machine learning will also play a very important role in some of the data, uh, data management steps, like data cleaning, for example. So AI can support you with an automated data cleaning. It could also support you with automated ETL pipelines and so on. So I think AI-powered data management is, is the future. 
right. then there are other two yeah, things which i think gets very important as well uh, one is data interoperability like how do you interpret or harmonize the data which is coming from different sources one of the big challenge right now if you look at in automotive and manufacturing industry is like data comes in a form of structure data comes in form of unstructured from different sources sometimes from on prem sometimes from edge sometimes from from cloud so data interoperability uh, i think and standardizing uh, the inter data interoperability is definitely something that i am looking forward that it becomes a trend and the final uh, and the last one that i see is the data security i mean the more data we collect the more uh, objects will be connected in future that means the security and uh, data security will be a big 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 vital topic that uh, all of the technology leaders have to look into it was a great ending of this great uh, pre-event interview, and we're looking forward to see you at the uh, Data Innovation Summit. Uh, so thank you for uh, thank you so much for the day, Garima. That was beautiful. Thank you very much for having me again, and I'm I'm too very excited uh, to be in the Data Innovation Summit in Stockholm. Perfect. See you soon. See you soon.